So without further ado, let me welcome our last speaker. Let's give him a really warm, move blink welcome, Julio Lopez. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us at this session. My name is Julio Lopez, and I'm Movable Link's Senior Director of Retail Strategy. After many years working across multiple retailers, I understand firsthand the challenges that we face as an industry, as well as the inherent ebb and flow of the importance of those challenges. The fact is that we as marketers face many competing priorities that we need to address. And the one that I want to talk to you about today is one that is bubbling up more and more in my conversations with brand site executives, and that is the challenge of retail's leaky bucket. Let me start first by asking you all a question. Which is more of a priority to your organization today? Is it customer acquisition or is it customer retention? If anyone here feels that both are given equal focus and resources at your organizations, then I would love to talk to you after this presentation so we can co-write what must be a one-of-a-kind case study. <laughs> For the rest of us, based on your laughs, it's more likely that our experience has been more like a pendulum, right? Ebbing back and forth between customer acquisition and customer retention based on the internal and external uh, impact on the business. And that's exactly what we're seeing at this moment. Executive teams are increasingly focused on customer retention for a number of key reasons. The continued economic uncertainty puts pressure on marketers to provide value to their customers, often in the shape of prices and promotions. The reduction in brand loyalty that we have all noticed necessitates that we provide customers a clear reason why they should shop with us. And shifting consumer behaviors require us to provide easy and convenient shopping experiences. Underpinned under all of that is the fact that we are all about to acquire a ton of new names to our files. And so we need a way to keep all of these customers engaged. Put differently, the focus for many marketing leaders is now to prioritize the leaky bucket challenge. So just to make sure that we're all on the same page, the theory imagines a bucket that has several holes. A hose is put into the bucket, it's filled with water, that represents all the net new customers that you are acquiring. The water falling out of the bucket represents all the existing customers that you lose. Ultimately, the leaky bucket analogy emphasizes the importance of not just focusing on customer acquisition, but also illustrates how critical it is for us to prioritize our customer retention efforts. The fact is that being strategic when it comes to customer retention pays off. 86% of retailers say that they have had to spend more money in order to achieve the same exact customer acquisition results. In fact, many say that they've seen their acquisition costs grow significantly, and as I'm sure you can all sympathize, these marketers are not receiving a commensurate increase to their marketing budgets. But if they were able to increase their customer retention rates by just 5%, they are seeing an average of a 25% boost to profitability, which is clearly a non-trivial amount of cash. So how do we tackle this challenge of maintaining our existing customer base? Imagine a value toolkit as a resource to help us through the leaky bucket challenge. While we can completely plug all the holes in the bucket, we can use it to mitigate churn and demonstrate the true value that we bring to our customers. So what are the key tools in our toolkit? We're going to cover four essential themes in this presentation. First is going to be prices and promotions. So how do we offer strategic promotions to showcase our commitment to providing value for money? Digital merchandising, so how do we ensure a diverse and comprehensive product selection that caters to the varied needs and preferences of our customers? Convenience, so how do we clearly educate and deliver on an exceptional end-to-end -end shopping journey? And data-driven personalization, so how do you get to know your customers so well that you can anticipate their needs? So let's dive in. Many of you will have life cycle promotions such as a welcome offer, birthday, loyalty, and of course, retention. My question to you is this. Why not scale out the reach of those offers outside of life cycle journeys and bring them into your batch messages? We know that consumers are not opening every single email, and so relying on triggers to bear the weight of these great offers seems like a missed opportunity especially when we have 66% of consumers telling us that they're switching brands in search for better deals. By including these offers in more touch points and adding waterfall logic to collapse them whenever they have been redeemed, you can make your promotions work harder. So Bath & Body Works has a banner at, on the top of their batch messages 
where a promotion that's tailored to that individual customer is shown. And of course, there's fallback logic if no offer is available. That said, while I'm sure that we can all appreciate the value of these targeted messages being shown in batch programs, we understand that this may not always be feasible. However, in those scenarios, we need to capitalize on existing store-wide deals in order to ensure that you receive credit for your competitive pricing. These types of messages are increasingly important, especially as consumers may not always be aware of the competitive pricing that you offer across different categories. One effective approach is to leverage web cropping to crop deals from a deals page, or ideally via an API, because exactly that's what we talk about all the time, and incorporating these into your broadcast messages, like Staples Canada does here. Metadata is captured from the website, uh, from the home page, and we transform that into a promotional story inside of the main message. And because this is fully automated, the marketer can now focus on more strategic initiatives. But the ideal scenario is to personalize these store-wide offers based on individual consumer behaviors. And that's because if we are able to provide a truly personalized experience, then it's more likely than not that we're gonna turn this customer into a repeat buyer. And that's exactly what you see in this email from HSN. First, we check to see if the customer qualifies for the primary offer this month, in this case, a $5 off coupon. If they are not qualified for the primary offer, we check the customer's stories profile to see if the customer has browsed any store-wide uh, or any category that has a store-wide offer available. So if the consumer was recently browsing fitness and there's a fitness offer available, then we bring that up to the top. Now you may have noticed that I'm not gonna be talking to you about the dedicated win-back triggers that many marketers associate with retention. The fact is that most marketers over-engineer the customer acquisition component of marketing and rely way too heavily on the, hey, we miss you, here's 20% off your next offer messaging. That's not to say that those messages aren't important, but they really are a last ditch effort to retain customers. Customer acquisition is not a three touch trigger journey. You are working to retain your customers with each and every interaction. So that means that when you think about what content you're putting in front of your customers, you have to be intentional about your decisions. And with more and more consumers switching brands for greater product selection and variety, we can't just rely on the old way of curating emails. Many of you have broadcast messages that feature collections like bestsellers, new arrival, top trending, exclusives. But more often than not, the products featured even in these targeted messages are really based on the merchandising team's forecasting goals. Consumers do not care that you are trying to push, say, swimwear in March ahead of the summer months. They care about swimwear when they are planning their next vacation, when it's convenient to them. And so this merchandising-led approach to emails is really only servicing the 80% of our customer base, and when we think about that 80-20 rule, we really need to find ways to speak to these two audiences more effectively. For the 20%, we can take a page out of HSN's playbook this is one of HSN's templates where each of the products in the product circles is pulling in new arrivals from categories that the consumer has recently engaged with. A template like this can be set up so that each of the product blocks can have its own rules. So we can have a merchant selected block, recent category browse, recent cart abandon, or product recommendations. So imagine that being able to balance the needs of the business or the merchandising team needs with our goal of one to one personalization. The point here is that even within a template, the rules per block can, bear, can vary, allowing us to meet our specific goals. So this results in one HTML and unlimited personalized variations, which in turn result in more repeat buyers. What about the 80%? The challenge here is that we generally don't have a lot of data on these customers, and the data that we do have is very difficult to action on because it's time consuming. We have to analyze, process the data, analyze it, validate it, segment it out, apply frequency caps across all of our emails, and then eventually create all the different email versions. And then the level of effort grows exponentially when you think about all the categories that we've got to target. So what do we do? We fall back on the most simple approach to marketing, which is reinforcement personalization. For example, if a customer shopped men's when they first signed up to your email program, we reward them with a barrage of men's only content. 
but we are in a new world now where AI tools are allowing marketers to scale out their personalization goals. One of the exciting things that I've had the pleasure of working on the last year has been DaVinci, surprise, surprise. And you'll hear more about that in our product keynote later. But among the amazing things that DaVinci can do, it's its ability to score creative assets at the individual subscriber level for the whole file. And that's what allows us to scale out our one-to-one -one messaging. For example, a consumer that a brand might have segmented as a beauty shopper won't necessarily receive beauty content. The DaVinci AI may identify that a men's creative is actually more relevant to that specific consumer and serve that up instead. Similarly, DaVinci may find that a consumer that is segmented into the women's segment does in fact need to be served women's content. But within the library of women's content, we have jackets, sweaters, and shorts. So take for example right now, even though we're in autumn, this specific customer has been identified by the AI as requiring summer shorts creative. And so the AI will serve that up instead. So DaVinci continuously scores each creative asset in the library for each individual. And that's what allows us to automate our content selection and scale up personalization. Really what we're talking about when we talk about content is personalization and relevance. Consumers may not say the exact words that you see on this screen because they don't talk about the customer journey in the way that we do, but they do react and sometimes viscerally when a brand sends them a message that is irrelevant or content that is irrelevant or when they have disjointed experiences across channels. Many of you have heard me say this before, consumers don't shop brand X in mobile or brand X in email, they simply shop brand X. And so it's up to us to ensure that we're retaining our customers by providing, providing them with convenient end-to-end -end experiences. So let's start with mobile. When a consumer grants you permission to market to them on what is quite literally one of the most personal channels, it requires a net new level of authenticity. It's also a channel where due to the limited real estate, we have to be hyper-focused. In this example, we can see that there's a rich push notification that showcases a product that the consumer has recently abandoned. The copy, the image, it's all dynamic. Some of our clients also layer on things like social proofing, inventory, or star ratings to provide the customer with all the information that they need in order to decide if they're going to convert. So when we think about leveraging this channel, we really have to ask ourselves, is this something that is worth making the consumer's phone buzz? By providing customers with convenient messages such as this one, we are more likely to retain them in the long run. And the idea of convenience must, might be most salient when it comes to fulfillment. We should be leaning into that messaging, especially since it's what many consumers are thinking about when choosing who to shop with. If you offer click and collect or same day delivery, make sure that you highlight that. Or perhaps you have an auto replenishment scheme make sure that you message that so that you can create stickier relationships with your customers. Or if the product that the consumer was recently browsing qualifies for free shipping, make sure you highlight that since it's a big consideration, especially given the economic climate. Or you can take a page from Toolstation. Their emails contain both online and in-store inventory, which really elevates the experience, but more importantly, it makes it easier for the consumer to convert in the channels in which they want to convert. The fact is that the Leaky Bucket Challenge is really a personalization challenge at its core. And personalization, in turn, is what allows us to do the very basics of our job, right? It's talking to the right people at the right time about the right things. And in turn, personalization needs data in order for it to be effective. And there are many sources of data that you can be tapping into to personalize all your customer touch points whether that be stories data, our SDK, our custom events API, your partner integrations, CSVs, or APIs, we use all this information to create visually compelling experiences that result in customer retention. And the epitome of a personalized touchpoint might just be a loyalty recap or a year in review email. These underscore the relationship that you have between your brand and your customer, and it's what motivates a customer to remain engaged. And that's what makes customers stay active on the file longer, that recognition of their loyalty to your brand. 
And monetary value is not the only consideration for consumers. They're also seeking out brands that align with their social values and create a sense of belonging. So it's crucial for us to recognize this and proactively demonstrate the positive impact that the consumer is having on the world. An excellent example of this is Rothy's, where they transparently highlight the positive impact consumers are having by showcasing the number of plastic bottles saved from landfills with each and every transaction. These genuine connections between your values and the customer's social values are what allow them to remain loyal to your brand. And what if you don't have data readily available as we often see? Then ask for it. I can't underscore enough the value and, and importance of zero party data, especially given the increase in privacy regulation. And there's a number of ways that we can collect and action on that data. For example, you can take a more product focused approach to data collection by understanding the pain points that you're looking to solve for that customer. So that's what you see on the left here, where we're asking the customer, what is your skin concern? This data then allows for more products to be targeted based on the actual needs of the customer. Or you can take a more audience focused approach, which is what you see here in the example from Liberty, where they're asking their customers, who are you shopping for this holiday season? A future email allows, allows that so that we can change the content based on that response and the featured products below the hero are automated as well. The point here is that by not leaning into data-driven personalization, we are leaving money on the table since those personalized experiences are what drive a lift in spend. Now, as we come to the end of this presentation and hopefully off of these really hot spotlights, <laughs> um, I want you to think about this. How can you address the leaky bucket for your own brand? How can you have more targeted prices and promotions? How can you be better at selecting the products that you're going to put in front of your customers? How can you create, message, and deliver more convenient experiences? And how can you be more data driven? These are the tools in your toolkit, and these are the ones that are going to allow you to retain more of your customers. So that brings us to about time. I was trying to make up a little bit there. If you found any of the ideas or strategies that we presented today, whether in this session or any of the other ones, please reach out to us. I would love to connect with you all on LinkedIn and keep the conversation going. We know that the year ahead is going to bring about net new challenges and underscore existing ones, and so we want to solve them together. With that, thank you for listening to this presentation, and enjoy the rest of the summit. <laughs>